This is a film to show people how to set up their user interface uh, with DoubleCAD Professional. Uh, DoubleCAD Professional is produced by IMSI, so it's essentially based on a TurboCAD type uh, back room, if you like, but with a face that looks rather more like AutoCAD Lite. So it's, it's very useful for AutoCAD Lite users that perhaps haven't upgraded for many years. Uh, need to upgrade because of whatever, because of Windows 7 is not working very well with their old version or 64-bit machine is causing them problems for some reason. Shouldn't do, but it does occasionally. Um, and of course they go and find out the price and they're horrified that it's going to cost them so much money to, um, to upgrade, to really refresh a program that they've been using for years. And of course there's no upgrade path if, you, if you're using AutoCAD Lite 2000. So here's an alternative. Um, and I'll talk through the uh, variations as we go along. Once you start up, once you open it, this is what you see. You get a number of uh, uh, templates available which you can look through. Um, but if you want to make your own, which most people I think tend to do, you can just start new. Uh, let me just turn something on here so that now this is how it will default and open to. It, it defaults to a black screen, which I mean, I personally, I've never saw why. So the first thing I'm going to do is simply turn off that black screen and make it white. That makes a lot more sense to me. Now, down at the bottom here we have the old command line that people, some people are used to, something personally I haven't used for 15 years and I think today is an anachronism really in so much, so many CAD packages around I can't imagine why people are still using this. The first CAD package I ever saw in development was 35 years ago and that had a command line and here it is still there. Uh, but if you want to use it, if you're used to using it, you don't want to change it there and you can tab into the command line, you know, hit C for circle and and then um, use all the other <coughs> things you used to use in, you know, your forward slashes and your TTs for tangentials and stuff like that, which I can't even remember now, they're just a, a memory in my past which I'm very pleased about. So personally the first thing I'm going to do is go up to the tools and turn that off. Now, if I right click my mouse button, you'll see there's a number of tools here attached to it. And that tends to be how it works. I can go over here to get a line. So if I want to draw a straight line, I can go over here and click and click, and there's my line. Or, the way I've set it up, I can right click and there's my line. And so I'm not moving so far, and I prefer that. <coughs> So the way we do that is to go up to Tools and um, Customize and pop up toolbars and all the tools that are on here, that are checked on here, will be on my the right click of my mouse, my local menu. So let's see, I'll take off dimensions, so I don't want to do the dimension yet. And close. So now the dimensions that were there last time are not there. So if I want to choose a rectangle, I go rectangle. Now if I want to choose another rectangle, I go click and, ah, it's not there. In TurboCAD, you keep your tool <coughs> over and over again until you go onto another tool. Here you don't. In DoubleCAD, you don't keep the tool here. There may be a way of setting it up so you do, but I haven't come across it yet. So if I want another rectangle in TurboCAD, I sim uh, in DoubleCAD, sorry, I simply right click and go repeat. And so I've got it there. Or of course, if I want to change my shape, um, I'll do that. Now, so we have all the usual things here, so uh, line, uh, perpendicular line, parallel lines, tangential to an arc or a point, tangential to an arc or a point, tangential away from an arc or a point, etc, etc. That one's greyed out because it's between two arcs and there's only one at the moment. If I draw another arc, I would hope that that would become line, which it is. So, very, much <coughs> very often when you look at... Uh, Tool. Sometimes when they're greyed out, it's simply because you can't use that tool at that moment in time. So that's the first thing I'm going to set up. And then I'm going to go to Windows and Options <coughs> and look through any changes I want to make here. Um, now I think you'll find it defaults to save in every 10 minutes. I, I've never liked that. I'm, I'm a big boy now. I'm all grown up. I've been using computers for some time. and I know they're terrible evil things and can cause you lots of problems, but the idea of it saving itself every 10 minutes so terrifies me. And um, 
you know so as I say I'm all grown up I can remember to to save every couple of minutes or save every time I get to a stage where I know that that's okay so I'll turn that one off um, you can click it on so that you'll open when it opens up you open the last drawing you click on there I can do that really desktop <coughs> um, it defaults to the rulers not being on I tend to like the rulers gives me some sort of something to touch in a way I don't know <coughs> that's how what I like doing it so I turn the rules on and it defaults not having the inspector bar because I think it's because they rather expected most people to use the command line but I don't so I turn on the inspector bar <coughs> and the boxes for the inspector bar you can change the size of them here but we'll leave it as just what it is <coughs> OpenGL hardware acceleration that's on when you start background render that's on flicker free drawer I can't remember that's on by default or not but I would turn it on what the hell you're not losing anything preference now uh, this defaults the zoom preference defaults to 1.4 um, and that that is the the the, the, um, the amount the incremental jump when you use your wheel mouse um, now you can take that down to 1.2 and I think that's the lowest you can take it down to so I'd change that to 1.2 and here you can have crosshairs uh, this sort of box I don't know what they call that or the arrow. Now I always tend to use this arrow, but just for the sake of it, we can look at the box, we can look at crosshairs, and um, whoops, they haven't come on, so uh, let's have a look. Options, preferences. Right, so we have to, ah, oh, crosshairs, we've got, we got, to, we can, we got variations here. Show, cross, show crosshairs, show isometric, which is not going to really make any difference, so we put it on and show aperture. Now let's have a look at the difference now when we turn it on. Ah, now I've got these crosshairs and um, so I can, you know, easier I suppose say where I'm going or locate something. Again, personally, they're not something I like. So I'm going to go to options but you can muck about with these, see which ones you like, see whether you like those or that or this, this is the one I go for. Aperture size is the size of that circle, you know that circle we saw in the middle of the crosshairs, that's that size. Uh, show us how much we don't need, show crosshairs. We'll leave that on for now. Now, at this stage, the other thing that I will want to do through tools and palettes is my tool palette so I can show my palettes all out here now when you first open this it defaults to having the snap modes on from over here now I don't use these snap modes I override snaps with keyboard shortcuts I find it quicker and I find it more accurate so I turn off any of the snaps that are on by default so this one at the top says no snap and down here I make sure these are greyed out and now my crosshairs are rather more useful to me because if I want a line going from the center of this circle I can go on the circumference of that circle hit Alt C and a line comes from the center of that circle if I want it going to the center of this circle again as long as the circumference is in that little circle up there I go Alt C and the line goes to that point if I want to go to this point here, that's a vertex, it's Alt V. Then the midpoint of this line would be Alt M. Oops, I'm not ah. Now you see that circle, that, that says essentially that I'm not close enough. So I say OK. So maybe that's close enough. Alt M. Yeah, got it that time. Now, and when you want to stop, you finish it down. Now if you're making too many mistakes there what you can do with those preferences is you can make the aperture larger so if I make it much larger stupidly larger really 30 you can see now that's much bigger so now that line that I'm going to draw from the center of that circle look anywhere in there Alt C I'm coming from it I don't have to be anywhere near as all accurate but obviously it's a little bit too much and that's you don't really want it that big so probably 10 would be plenty depending on how big your drawing is show the crosshairs if I don't want to see the crosshairs I'll turn those off personally I, I'm not I don't really use them 
So now we can see how that's changed. There we go, we've, we've lost the crosshairs. The circle is rather smaller. This would be an intersection, so I, uh, Alt I, sorry, and to the center of that circle, Alt C. <coughs> Simple as that. One other thing I'll explain that people occasionally ask me about in its preferences, this use choice of several entities. That is, um, if I'm going to select an object, so if I'm going to select, if I want to select this line here, if I go to select it from there, it's going to say, what do I want? Polyline, they go gr green as I go over each one. Um, so it's given me a, um, a number of uh, alternatives. If I want to select that line, I select it from there, and then it's, there's no argument. But if I am too close to other things, which can be the case, that's, uh, that, that's what that's all about. And that's about it really. Uh, auto naming. <coughs> this the only one you change is insert blocks when uh, creating. By default, this is not checked. What this means is that when you create a block and you drag it into the blocks library, it will go in and it will disappear from your drawing. Whereas if you click on to insert blocks when creating, <coughs> excuse me, the your original drawing will stay in the drawing. It'll go into the blocks library as well, but your first one will be there. So it's not terribly important, but that's just one I always do. And then I say OK. Now, the other things that I would do at the beginning to help uh, my workflow would be in tools and palettes. I'd have a number of things readily available. I would have, first of all, my design director out. Here's the design director, and I'll dock it over there. Design director and uh, work planes, views, layers, and I can mess about with that. Um, I would also have my uh, selection information out, and again that I can oops, sorry, that I can dock over there. I don't need to see them all at once. I can close that one. I can open them up. And, oh no, 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 open up. That's awesome. So, um, palettes, um, what else would I have? I would have, uh, on oh, my blocks library. So here's a blocks library, which would be useful. Here's my selection information, so that anything I chose, <coughs> so if I chose this circle, there it is, a circle. It tells me about it, any 3D parts of it, which I don't have, any fills, which I don't have, and general stuff, watch layer it's on, that sort of business. So sense here, and I can change the sizes here. So if I want to change the radius, and it's 1.153, if I make it 3 and hit return, we can see it changes from there. So I tend to have that out. Um, and what else? I don't think there's anything else, really. Internet Design Director, the Drafting Palette. Drafting Palette, maybe. You just have to look around these things and see which ones that you use all the time. But the design director is probably uh, more of use because you can change your uh, work planes and your layers. Layers are really the most important part. Layers 1 and 2. You can add layer templates and layer files. And this is where you uh, bring in new layers. So if I want a new layer here, I can say OK and <coughs> I can manipulate my layers from here so if I want to work on the new layer I can simply click on there and work on the new layer if I want my default layer to be invisible if I click onto there it's invisible so I think that's about it really as an introduction uh, this can go over there so it's not in the way and um, so that's just the way I would set it up and uh, I think that's about it for now.